What's up, spectators? Welcome back to the episode of Last Window. Last time we confronted Will White and we discovered he was actually a McGrath who is, you know, historically tied to this place. Um, I, at least I think that was last episode. Huh? Is everything okay, Mr. Hyde? Yeah, just peachy. I was worried for a moment. You took the words right out of my mouth, kid. Did you manage to get away okay? Yeah, just about. He came back while I was keeping watch. I didn't want him to see me, so I quickly made my way back to my room. Sorry. Don't worry, it was quick thinking. Besides, it's not like I could have hid it in his room. Well, you could have tried. I guess you're right. I found out some useful information, though. You know the murder victim from 13 years ago. Turns out Will's her son. I feel like this is private information. You just shouldn't divulge this, but whatever. He's not planning on coming back here anytime soon, either. It's probably best if you just forget all about him. He's not the kind of guy you should be associating with in any case. I see. Thanks for the advice. I'll steer well clear of him. Charles moves away. So, I finally discovered who sent me that order sheet. It was Will White. Will White. I'd never have guessed he could have been behind it. Would have. All I can think about is finding the truth behind what happened 25 years ago. I think I know what I need to do. I think it's time I gathered my thoughts about all that's happened. December 25th. Tony came to my room and gave me Rex's notebook. Written inside was a reference to Condor and a man called Jack Green. It said they had both disappeared in 1967. Rachel kindly looked into the name Jack Green and found out that he was... A... journalist? Jack Green worked as a reporter for a publication called Los Angeles Beat. Rachel discovered that he had unearthed certain truths about Condor and had been murdered before he could unveil it all publicly. After returning Sydney's record to him, we had a chat. This led me to want to talk to Max regarding her late husband. Her husband, who was killed 13 years ago, went by the name of... Georgie. <sighs> really glad they included a picture. Max's husband's name was George Patrice. He was the proprietor of several successful eateries around town. Mags went on to explain that he was killed during a robbery that took place 13 years ago. Once Mags and I had concluded our business, Rachel contacted my pager. I got her on the phone, then looked into the photos from the album on the fourth floor. I made the startling discovery of a certain person in one of the photos. That person was... Young Mags. It was none other than Mags I discovered in one of the photos. It was in a photo showing a party dubbed Scarlet Star. In it, she was wearing the necklace she still wears today. She looked a lot younger in that picture. From a photo and the 8mm film that Charles showed me, we noticed that Will White from room 306 appeared in both. Charles agreed to help me when I decided to go and get a closer look at his room. Thanks to the contents of the safety deposit box and the postcard inside the camera, I was able to discern a certain truth about Will. What was it I found out? I found out that his real name was Will McGrath. Turns out he's the son of the late manager of Hotel Cape West, Michael McGrath. The postcard and passport I uncovered inside his room proved it. After Will returned to his room, I put him on the spot to get some straight answers. He confessed to having been one of the one behind the mysterious order sheet I'd received. He went on to explain that the reason he sent it to me was because... The reason he sent me the order sheet was because he didn't want his mother's murder to remain unpunished. He also shared a new startling revelation with me about 25 years ago. The person who snuck into Hotel Cape West, with the intention of cracking the safe and stealing the Scarlet Star, was my dad. I could only stare dumbly at Will when he told me. 
The truth that Will shared with me didn't reveal everything, but at least... Another of this building's mysteries has come to light. Why am I so keen on uncovering the truth behind what took place here 25 years ago? Thanks to him, I now have an outline that puts things into better perspective. Now I know for certain, if I search for the Scarlet Star, I will also find out the truth behind my dad's murder. In addition to those, I've also begun to consider something. That there's even more to this whole mystery than meets the eye. I have to uncover it all. Today is the last Friday of the year. I didn't sleep very well at all last night. I get up early in the morning. I head straight to the bathroom and take a refreshing cold shower. That goes a little way towards clearing my head. After the shock of what that guy told me last night, I've managed to calm down a bit. I leave the bathroom and take the towel I'd hung on my shoulder to dry my wet hair. I squat down in front of my speakers and take a record off the shelf. I mount the record on the turntable. And when I switch the player on, the record starts to spin. I place the needle carefully onto the top. The gentle, solemn sounds of a saxophone. Wow, that's a tongue twister. The gentle, solemn sounds of a saxophone. The solemn sounds of a saxophone. Start drifting from the speakers. The speakers of the solemn sounds of a saxophone. I move myself over to the bed, sit on the edge, and listen to the melody. That solemn sound that only a saxophone can deliver of the solemn sound from the speakers of the saxophone. <laughs> For some reason, it makes my mind spring back to the words Will uttered to me last night. All I'm after now is the truth behind what happened 25 years ago. Then it dawns on me. The only one who can truly uncover all that happened is me. Delusions of grandeur. At that precise moment, I notice that the turntable has come to a halt. The melody that had kept me in a trance has ended. I throw on some clothes. Ah, I see he was doing this naked. I get through two cups of black coffee as I lounge on the sofa. I suppose I'd better let Rachel in on what happened last night. I finish mulling things over and haul myself off the sofa. I suppose I better... Oh, yes. Okay, I'm sorry. I need to go to the telephone. Really? Mr. Hyde, can we talk? That sounds like Dylan. What the hell does he want with me now? Come on, man. This video game making me go back and forth. Rude. I like how I didn't even let him in. I, I just went out. What do you want? Well, it's... I've been so anxious to hear the next installment from last night. Stop making some sense or get out of here. You know, after you met me in front of room 306, what happened next? You met up with Mr. White, didn't you? Yeah, that's right. So, you gonna tell me what you were so keen to talk to him about? No, it's got nothing to do with you. But I really wanna know. Come on, you could tell me. Listen, Dylon. Why the hell are you so keen to know anyway? Well, that's simple. I'm curious. Curious? Yeah, right. Spit it out, Dylon. You were inside 306, right? What are you trying to say, Mr. Hyde? I was only in there because of the maintenance Mr. White asked me to take care of. I thought I told you the reason yesterday. 
Did he really ask you to take care of some maintenance, Dylan? Sure he did. Because he told me a different story and it didn't include any maintenance. I'm telling you, he asked me. Why would Mr. White say something different to you? You gotta believe me, I was only in there because of the maintenance. Here you are, Dylon. I've been looking for you. Mrs. Patrice? What can I do for you? Actually, it's about Mr. White in 306. He has a favor to ask you. Oh, hello there, Mr. Hyde. Are you having a good morning? I mean, the guy literally just woke up, listened to music, had a bunch of coffee, did nothing else. Sounds like a good morning to me. What does Mr. White want? He called me only a moment ago and asked. He's not coming back to the building, you see. So he asked if Dylon could remove his remaining things. Mrs. Patrice? Does that mean he's officially vacated his room? Yes, it would seem so. He was due to move out next week, but he told me something urgent had suddenly arisen. That's what he called me to say. But he seemed quite keen to get the message to you, Dylon. I'd like you to clear out the remainder of Mr. White's things and furniture. Also, please take care of any repairs and such that need doing. No problem. I'd better get started. Catch you later. Dylon hastily makes his exit. I'm sure there'll be plenty more to be done as we draw closer to next week. It's gonna be far busier than usual around here, that's for sure. Have you finalized your moving arrangements yet, Mr. Hyde? Please feel free to let me know as soon as you have. Sure, I'll tell you once it's all been sorted. I appreciate that you're busy with numerous other things. But please be sure to let me know what you're planning at your earliest convenience. I have to be sure everything has been accounted for before this place ceases to be. Don't sweat it, I'll let you know in good time. I've got some unfinished business to take care of first though. Oh, such as what? Isn't this place being demolished? What's the point of making repairs? Just go to town, have a big party. I have to find something. Something? Did you lose something during your stay? Well, something got lost all right, but it wasn't mine. But the fact remains, if it's gonna be found, I need to be the one to find it. It's the truth. Can you share with me what it is you're looking for? Listen, Mrs. Patrice. There's actually something I need to ask you about the thing that I'm looking for. You need to ask me? Yes. Can you spare a few minutes? I'm not sure I want to, Mr. Hyde. You're acting very oddly indeed. What are you plotting? Don't worry, I've got no nasty surprises in store for you. Just a couple of questions. It's pretty important to me, so I'd be grateful if you could spare me some time. There's no use hiding it, Mr. Hyde. I've already heard from Dylan. I know what you've been up to. What's he been saying? He told me that you used to be a detective and that, although he doesn't know why, you've been snooping around on the fourth floor. He told you that, did he? Now listen to me, Mr. Hyde. I don't know what your purpose is or what you're looking for, and I have no intention of making you tell me. All I want is to leave this place quietly and peacefully. That's why I'm gonna ask you nicely. I've been honest with you up until now and have answered all your questions. I think I've been more than helpful to you. But please refrain from asking me anything further. I have nothing more to say to you. You've got plenty to say and don't try to deny it. I'm telling you, I haven't. Even if you have nothing to say to me, trust me, I've got plenty to say to you. I got questions to ask and things to tell. Things to tell me? And what kind of things might they be? So you're listening now? I have a message from a member of Kathy McGrath's family. I beg your pardon. But I'm sure you're not interested. That's right, I'm not. Okay, Mr. Hyde, I give in. I can spare some time to talk with you. I'll fit in with you, so just let me know when's good. Shall we say this afternoon at four in my room? 
It's a date. Okay, I'll expect you then. Mags leaves. 4 p.m. in Mag's room. I better make a note of that. Wouldn't want to be late. It's a phone. Is it coming from my room? Hello? Hey, Rachel. Morning, sweetie. Good news. You'll see after you've heard this voice. I'll pass you over. It's me, Ed. Ed. Why so surprised? It's just, Rachel told me you wouldn't be out until the weekend. Yeah, well, that's what they told me at first. But I can't stand that damn place. All the free food and the service. Ha! <laughs> Besides, I figured there's no way you and Rachel would last five minutes on your own. So I blew the doc's mind by making a miraculous recovery. Lucky for you, huh? Well, I'll tell you this for free. We're not so dumb that we can't take care of the place without you, you know. That's right, Ed. We don't need you. You don't have the first idea about how this, how this place runs. If I left it to you two, I'd be out of business in no time. Especially with a lazy bum like you in charge. Anyways, it's all thanks to you, Hyde. I was so worried about how this place would work without me, I couldn't even die in peace. Yeah, well... Glad you're still in the land of the living, Ed. Not exactly the greeting I was expecting, but hey. It's good to hear your voice. Now's not the time to start getting all soft, okay? <laughs> yeah. How's the search for that item coming along? I know who sent me the order sheet. Turns out he's been living here under a false name. He's the son of Kathy McGrath, who was murdered here 13 years ago. Related to the victim, huh? The Vic? Who had a perf al? But that doesn't explain how he knew what you got up to behind the scenes. His name's Will McGrath. By day, he pretends to be a salesman, but actually, he's a lone thief. He claims he has contacts that can provide him with all sorts of information. He even knew about my dad. Impressive. What'd he know about him? He said that dad broke into Hotel Cape West 25 years ago, with the intention of stealing the Scarlet Star. He what? This is what he told me. The incident 13 years ago and the one 25 years ago. He said they're both connected to Nile. But why did he send the order to you? He said he wanted to try and encourage me to take an interest in those incidents. He found it hard to believe that I wasn't looking into the truth behind Dad's death. Go on. Before he left, he gave me a clue to help me find the Scarlet Star. So, where does that leave you now, Hyde? I'm gonna find out the truth behind what happened 25 years ago. To do that, I need to continue looking for the missing item. Once I find the Scarlet Star, I have to deliver it complete to complete the order. Then I'll claim my reward of the truth of 25 years ago. I see. Then do what you gotta do and keep searching. And don't stop until you've uncovered everything. That's the plan. I'm gonna pass you back to Rachel. Hello? Rachel, keep an eye on him and don't let him push himself too hard. I gotta concentrate on finding this item, so I'll leave Ed to you. Sure thing, Kyle. Before you go, I got an update for you. You asked me to get a hold of the last article written by Jack Green. Well, I managed to get it for you. What did it say? It's titled, The Truth Behind Condor. It was meant to be an ongoing piece, but ended after the first part was published. At the end of the article, the following appears. There's a gigantic void behind the organized crime syndicate known as Condor. 
Condor has managed to evade justice, thwart police investigations, and successfully sell their stolen wares, but it seems unlikely that the group could have accomplished any of this with no outside assistance. There's no doubt in this writer's mind that an as-yet undisclosed force has been operating in the shadows behind Condor. Without this force, Condor would not exist. The next part of this article will expose the identity of this shadowy force. And that's where the article stops. A force operating in the shadows behind Condor? I take it you've heard about the recent jewelry thefts, right? Yeah, there's even been some near here. This series of thefts seems to bear all the marks of those carried out by Condor. So they say. There's gotta be a TV news special showcasing the recent ones on at 11. I see. Anyway, that's all I can offer you for now. I'll be in touch if I find out more. A new show about the thefts resembling those of Condor. Sounds like the kind of thing I should watch. I suppose I better switch on the news. There's an old cartoon on. Pinky Rabbit. That takes me back. It's time for five news. Today we examine the recent spate of jewelry robberies occurring all over the city. Spat? Spat? A store owner has provided us with an interesting eyewitness account. Who is this mysterious woman that appears on the scene before every robbery? Five News, as always, is hot on the heels of any lead. The day before the robbery occurred, a woman that I had never seen before entered the shop. I assumed she was just a customer, but she didn't seem to be interested in any items, and just wandered around the shop looking around. I couldn't see her face due to the black hat and sunglasses she wore. A black hat and sunglasses! There was one other distinguishing feature. She wore a ring. Yes, a diamond ring. It was very noticeable. The diamond was flanked on both sides by rubies. It was unmistakable, but we thought she was one of our richer customers, so we paid it no heed. Here we have an artist's rendering of the mystery woman. The most obvious features are the wide-brimmed black hat and large sunglasses. She is also wearing a distinctive diamond ring. There are reports of the same woman appearing at the other Rob stores. Could this woman be the key to solving these cases? The LAPD are making her arrest their top priority. This is Robert Harrison for 5 News signing off. Woman in the Hat who appears before a theft. I'm sure that's the same one that I passed just outside this building. That diamond ring, too. There's something about it. Surely she couldn't be. Okay. I hear the sound of a door close from somewhere. Uh, a door close from somewhere nearby. All right, well, it's been uh, just about 25 minutes, so why don't we just go ahead and end this video here, and we'll find out who it was next time. So, stay tuned for the next episode, and thanks for watching. Bye bye